from the tree on you. It would injure you. It would hurt you very much so, okay? But a suspect package sent to six people to the hospital caused an evacuation because <laughs> it turned out to be durian. <laughs> Twelve German postal workers received medical treatment and dozens more were evacuated due to a pungent suspect package, which turned out to be a shipment of the notorious smelly durian fruit. Mm-hmm. Now, durians are good, like apparently, because people like the cream, the creamy flesh and like to eat it. And it's it a tastes del- like custard or something. Apparently, so they what's what they reckon. I you like get past the smell. I like them because in the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wilds, which I finished, you can find durians throughout the game, and when you cook it with different ingredients, you get superpower. Oh, there you go. There you go. I've found this little outcrop where there's a whole bunch of them growing, and mm. I go back there and make potions all the time so I can, you know, fight the, the bigger monsters and be strong and all that kind of thing. So that's only good in that game. In real life, they're f- shit. <laughs> Police, firefighters, and emergency services were called to a post office in the Bavarian town of Schweinfurt. <laughs> where was it? Schweinfurt. <laughs> S. S-C-H-W-E-I-N-F-U-R-T. It's Schweinfurt. If you're from, if you're in Schweinfurt, how, how do you think, how do you think you've got a visitor or a neighbour in Sch- No, right, you're talking, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Wait, so you go to the dog park in Schweinfurt and then a neighbour's talking to you and you just want to point out which animal's yours. You go, in Schweinfurt, das ist mein Wuffer. <laughs> At the risk of offending an entire country, right? No, no that's what you would say. It's the Bavarian town of Schweinfurt. <laughs> and da- das ist mein Wuffer. Anyway. Um, anyway. You know what the German for hospital is? No. Krunkenhaus. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, but the best part is you get taken to the, the hospital in a Krunken wagon. Really? Yeah. Can you, can you do, like... Crunken wagon, um, crunken house for me, please. Just um, in that voice, because um, that's the best gay German voice I've ever heard in my uh, life. Bitter, <laughs> bitter. <laughs> Where is the crunken house, Steinford? Where's the Wolfer shack? <laughs> where, where is? I broke him. Can you tell me, bitter? Where is das? Why are you calling everyone breast? <laughs> Wolfer. Kronken House, <laughs> which is where's the vet hospital? Where's the vet hospital? In Steinfurt. Breast, where is the vet hospital? Breast is a, ta- a, a town in Germany. There's a few breasts. There's plenty of breasts <laughs> in Europe. Shall I Turkey continue? German breast. Anyway, the Bavarian town of <laughs> Steinfurt. Stop it. Due to the unknown contents, it was initially unclear whether the suspect package posed a greater risk. A statement from Schweinfurt Police Department. Is it Schweinfurt Polizei? Or am I mixing my languages oh, there now? I think that's Polish. What, Polizei? Mm. No, that's Italian, I think. You know, if I was going to get all tough and be like a, a, a Italian rapper and shit, I'd be like, no, no, hang on, this is the Netherlands. Oh, God. No, the mother no can Polizei. Okay. We've In just- Schweinfurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's his main buffer. We, we're gone now. Yeah, There's... could you imagine, just for a second, how would you say that threatening? Like, if you're Jason Statham going over to do European movies, <laughs> be like, That's his main buffer. <laughs> anyway, I'll continue. Please the entire do. building was evacuated as 60 employees forced out on the street before the package got examined carefully. <laughs> it turned out that there were four Thai durian fruits, which a 50-year-old resident of the town had sent home from a friend in Nuremberg. Now, the spiky food <laughs> flavour and creamy texture has made it popular throughout Southeast Asia, but its infamous odour has gained at many detractors. Singapore has prohibited as mm. the uh, fruit on, on the MRT, on the subway system. Oh. You can't take a durian yeah. on, the, on the train. You can't go to the night it market to get it. stink up the train. Apparently it does. And hotels ban it as well. Oh, so yeah. if you're a tourist over there, forget it. You know, yeah, you've got to eat it on the beach or some shit. Yeah, you better eat it yep. on the beach there. Yep. Absolutely. Now, some people have asked, "What does a durian taste like?" Well, I can answer that as because I've eaten it, and it tastes like my socks after going camping, <laughs> <laughs> or rotten food, mm. or what you'd find. Like, basically, I think the only fans of these people are like people have lost their sense of taste or smell, ah. or bin chickens. <laughs> Or seagulls. Maybe that's why the seagull yacked. He had a durian. Oh, maybe. Hang on, let me just try something different, Ready? Dust his main bin chicken. 
Imagine becoming a millionaire at 15. Now, look, you're just, you know, working hard on your own stuff and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You're blogging. You become a millionaire and all that kind of thing. Like, who who is going to become a millionaire at 15, all right, apart from Tori Spelling or somebody like that, right? Who's going to become a millionaire? No one. She had to work hard for this one. An 18-year-old blogger from Russia. Now, this is sad. She's died in a motorcycle accident in Bali after losing control of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Would you like to know what she was doing in the 10 seconds prior to this motorcycle accident? Taking a selfie. That's correct, Daz. You are 100% correct. Video footage. She was actually filming herself. It shows the last moments where she filmed herself on the Ninja 250 motorcycle wearing a helmet and smiling into the mirror before catching a panning sunset on a beach. God's sake. Was she... Driving the bike? Or was yes, she, a she was. Her boyfriend was riding next to her mm. on a different bike. Now, Anastasia, whose real name is Sveinfeld, no, <laughs> Zabrina, she's been a blogger since the age of 12. Her Instagram account has a following of 1.2 million people. That's a lot. It is. She became a millionaire at 15 from her successful internet presence and would often share as motivational posts alongside glamorous travel stamps of her in her time in Bali. Now, uh, she basically, her and her boyfriend, uh, living in Bali during COVID-19. Okay. Well, well, she's not anymore, but he's kind of is there. Now, um, there's some really horrific pictures that they've printed in the Balinese. Um, yeah, they don't f- around they over there in Indonesia, man. They don't. So she was staying there. Now, uh, and then just before she died, she was embroiled in a public row with her dad. He'd warned her that her online success story was turning into a failure. He goes, your business is collapsing. Now I bet you he reckoned he could eat those words. Or is it a carefully orchestrated publicity stunt? No, no, no. She's Oh, she's dead, mate. All right. She's cool. dead. So in the se- see, look at this. This is the type of thing she's doing there. You know, sitting by the pool, pineapple, coconut, everything all, and then... Norks out. Norks out. Um, there's a... Going, re- I'm better than you now. Follow me on Instagram, peasant. Yeah, exactly right. And then look at this one as well. Like, there's, like she's not leaving much of the desire in the downstairs area. Christ. Do you know what I mean? And then photos of her in business class, living it up. Why do people try to live their life through vapid Russian Instagrammers. I don't know. But anyway, it's sad that she's it died. Is. It's absolutely sad. But, Bali but is- she got the death wobbles. Yep, and then bang, got the death. And fell over into a fence oh. hu- like hu- at 90 k's an hour. Bloody hell. Yep. But the problem is, like, Bali is like the Wild West when it comes to traffic and stuff over there, man. Like, it's you just take your life in your hands. And a lot of them, like the scooters and stuff, like you rent a scooter and shit in Bali and they give you like a plastic helmet. So not even a real one? No, you don't have to wear helmets. You don't have to wear shoes. Like you see dudes like in just a pair of stubbies screaming around on scooters. Not and even a Bing Tang t-shirt. Not even a Bing Tang singlet, bro. You know what? You you had a positive experience in Bali. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Did you leave the resort? Yeah. And did you not think it this place because a lot of people <laughs> I, I have no reason to go to Bali whatsoever mm. now, at it's all. It's kind of like the low rent Singapore I loved it but it's, it's, well, it's you a just third go, world country. Go somewhere else and enjoy yourself. Like what, what were you really mainly there for? Because it was cheap. Because it was cheap. Mm. Yeah, it was that, cheaper to go to Bali than it was to go to the Gold Coast. Right. Yeah well that's true. What about what about in the winter time though? Nothing's going on in the Gold Coast in winter. Mm, what do you want to go to the f- Gold Coast in winter for? Because you're at the Gold Coast. Yeah. Strip clubs. <laughs> You know, you don't have to exchange your money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you get to see the real Gold, Gold Coast. You know, 67-year-old women in bathing suits still trying to pretend that it's cool and go to gold in the 80s. Looking like a Versace handbag. That's been, like, lost in, a, in the sun. No, in a drain yeah. since 1981. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Pass. And men as well. Oh, men get... Oh, why is it when you what? get older and fatter, you've got to wear a... F- Budgie smuggler. I don't get it. I don't. I'm a fat man, right? I'm a fat, pale man. Can't old... Like, <laughs> I wear it, you boardies cre- and a big shirt. Do you crest up? Yeah, you do. I oh, Haven't you got a rashy? No, it's just a shirt. It's a cotton shirt. Yeah. Right? Do you crest an age where you go, you know what? I couldn't be wearing board shorts. Here's me guts. Here's me package. Where's fucking- the continental shelf drop off <laughs> where you just go... Yeah, budgie well, I haven't re- I haven't reached it yet. Now listen, I'll let you know. Uh, Tony Abbott, right? And his budgie <laughs> smugglers, somewhat now maybe on the precipice. Like he's adopted early, and he's had them because he's been like he was a, a life- lifesaver and stuff. Yeah, 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 lifesaver, firefighter, and all that kind of thing. Why did we not revere him anymore? Because he's a. D- yeah, well, that that's true. During the fires, though. Yeah, look, we'll give him cro- we'll give him props he, for that. But yeah. he's still a, a raven lunatic, though. Yeah, exactly right. 
However, though, I, I would love to know what the age is where you drop over the shelf, the continental shelf, and go, you know what, I'm going budge smugs. <laughs> Maybe there's like a comfort thing. I used to hate- just think that you feel like all naked and shit. Like I don't know. I'd, I've never really rocked out with me f- almost out in a pair of budgie smugglers. Uh, I'm much more comfortable in a in a board board short. Yeah, so a, a nice board short. Board short. Yeah. Maybe maybe a name brand board short like a Stussy or a Mambo. Well, yeah. not Mambo anymore. They're Rip sold Curl out. or whatever. Billabong. No, they're all sold out to bloody. Yeah. It doesn't really matter anymore. I don't really care about the brand. As long, well, as, as, long as me junk isn't hanging out, really. But if you go camping with the boys and it's a hot day and you take your camp chair into the bloody and you didn't bring your boardies. Well, then you're in in the uns. Then you're in the, the undies. undies. Yeah, you got to go in. But that's that's. Mm. I didn't like wearing uh, speedos when I was younger. I had a little green pair and they were real speedos. I hated it because I just felt exposed. Do you know what I mean? You are. You're very out there, aren't you? Like yeah, yeah. Like kudos to the girls for wearing you know the bikinis and stuff because you're, you're yeah. very exposed. You're basically just a thin piece of lycra between you and the world. That's right. How did we get on to uh, this from the tragic death of an 18-year-old Russian blogger? Because to tell you the truth, her life's not that interesting and we just kind of tangented it away. Yeah. Uh, but- and, and, like, the loss of life at any point in time is horrible and horrific and stuff. But saying that you're a successful blogger or influencer is like saying you're a millionaire with um, Monopoly money. That's true. So the lesson learned out of this is I don't give a shit if you've got 1.2 million followers. I'm not going to look at your pictures. Not anymore. She can't take anymore. <laughs> There are a few things more, okay, that are un-Australian, but I can't think of any of them right now. But getting kicked out of the pub is probably one of them. Now, if you're not munted under Australian law or state laws, if you're munted, they refuse you service and they ask you to leave, you have to leave. Right. Because you could get fined. Mm Mm-hmm. Five grand or something like that. Mm Mm-hmm. If you're in there and and the police have to come and pull out that yellow gun that's strapped to their chest <laughs> and advise you to leave. If you're going to give them cheek, you're a dickhead. Mm-hmm. Okay? Let's not beat around the bush. Don't need to look in the funk and wagnall encyclopedias about that. If you want to start shit and you're pissed at a pub. They can tase your ass. They'll tase you, drag you out <laughs> you, with your shit pants. All right? You've shut yourself up. Pissed after yourself. Being, yeah, pissed yourself, all that kind of thing. Probably vomiting like a seagull. Probably like that, right? Yep. And you'll be charged cleaning charges in the back of the, uh, the patrol Absolutely. car on your way to the drunk tank. You're going to be sitting in a long room with a perspex wall and a cold concrete bench. Covered in excrement. That's exactly right. They may even throw you one of the cells and hit you with a fire hose <laughs> just to sober your drunk <laughs> ass up. But as... Oh, where are you going with this? There's nothing more un-Australian than refusing entry into a pub for a hairstyle. <sighs> Now, let's just think about this for a second, all right? Is it a pub or is it like a club, an upmarket club that's got a bit of a dress code? No, it's a public house. Public house, all right. Then, yeah. The saga is a sad one, which Mm. we're going to talk about right now, okay? Okay. Okay. A Perth teen who was denied entry to a pub because of his mullet is raging on. So much so that the West Australian Premier, Mark McGowan... Oh, look out. ...has now weighed in on this hairy situation. (laughs) Of course, he dissolved into laughter as, as he was asked at a press conference to comment on the 18-year-old Cooper Allen, who was refused entry to a pub in a move that he claims was discrimination. Now, it's bloody discrimination. Discrimination. Now, listen, he says, I encourage people with mullets to rise up and <laughs> rebel <laughs> against these extreme rules in the pub. He was very deadpan, very deadpan, after first clarifying if he was being asked about the hairstyle or the fish. He said, I think you should be able to be free to have a mullet, go to the pub. I don't think there should be any rules around it. Can you imagine just for a second, as if we banned the mullet at, say, one of the largest motor racing events in Australia, the super cheap auto Bathurst 1000, if, if basically it's stipulated in the rules of the campgrounds. <laughs> no mullets. No mullets. Jeez, it'd, be good to, it'd be easy to find a good spot, though, you'd wouldn't be, it? Yeah, you'd be able to get up against the fence and watch the race. No problems. <laughs> if you ban the mullet... Do you want to hear the bastion of information that Australia should just pull itself away from the teat and stop sucking on it, which is Sunrise? Oh, I thought you were going to say the um, the project then. No, no, not at all. Not at all. But this is uh, the audio that happened on uh, Channel 7's Sunrise. Uh, they're talking. How did this make you feel when you were refused entry? Uh, I was a bit shell-shocked. I was a bit uh, confused, you know, considering Scarborough's a pretty welcoming place and all kinds of cultures and people go down there, so it's a bit hmm. ordinary, I suppose. 
did the did the bouncer go into details? Why do you was it? He yeah, just didn't let, like it. We're not not letting you in, Kosh.